Okay guys, so it's been arguably the best week of the trip so far. We made it to the Exumas and it started off with a bang. So the next leg of our voyage was, go, was to go to the Exumas. And since we had even left Florida and talked to people about the Bahamas, everyone said, number one place in the Bahamas you have to go is the Exumas, Exumas, Exumas. You've been hearing about it so long that we were honestly just itching to get out there. It's a long group of island chains. Most of them, um, I mean, we left from uh, Cape Luther Marina where we got these well-deserved showers and um, sort of our favorite thing to get in the marina is this ice cream bar. But we left there feeling good, morale was up, and it was about a six hour crossing to get over to one of the northern islands of the Exumas. The first one we stopped at was Shroud Key. Um, and Shroud Key is really interesting because um, a little different than a lot of the Exumas, it actually had uh, a small little river that went all the way through Shroud Key through this maze of mangroves and actually came out on the other side to this like secluded beach of this beautiful view uh, of the Caribbean. So we got into Shroud Key late that night, woke up early the next morning, loaded everyone up in the dinghy and took this sort of like surreal experience uh, through this river of all these mangroves on this just barren island of, of the Exumas and came out on the other side and we spent basically the next three hours just enjoying this beautiful beach um, to ourselves. No one else there. It's one of those cool moments where you just feel like you're the only humans on earth. And uh, then we're able to ride uh, the river down. We saw tons of turtles. Um, I mean, the wildlife was just amazing on this island. Bahamas have done a really good job keeping islands like this sort of protected and uh, got on the boat. And that was just the very first start uh, to the Exumas. From there, we uh, went down to Wardrick Wells Key. And Wardrick Wells was the first time that we were ever able to get on the hook on a mooring. The next place we went to, it hadn't even been uh, something we had originally planned. It was more of just something that they had mentioned when we were at Wardrick Wells, something you might want to hit the farther down you go, simply known as the aquarium. We were able to get another mooring ball, took a short little dinghy ride over to this spot, and I don't think any of us were prepared for when we actually jumped in the water with our snorkeling gear. It was like a kaleidoscope of uh, ocean life. Like every fish imaginable, all these bright colors, the sea life, the coral was like neon colored. It was, it was honestly one of the craziest experiences. We all just kept looking at each other underwater, just amazed by one, the sheer number of fish, like the volume of marine life was outstanding and everything was just so healthy and so bright and so clear if you're just enjoying it so much. And you could just remain still, way to point out, you just remain still, and the fish would just come up right next to you pretty much, like touching your face and swimming around you. It was uh, one of the most amazing experiences of the voyage so far, honestly, one of the reasons that we're doing this in the first place. And then, sure enough, we, you know, we get back from the dinghy, and we didn't have to go back to the boat, we just took the dinghy another spot, uh, you know, maybe 200 meters, uh, away from the boat in the other direction and we went to a sunken plane. There was a plane that had crashed uh, years and years ago. Don't know the full story of it, but it's now become this really awesome dive site um, here in the Exumas. That was our basically our second or uh, second or third day there in the Exumas and just kept getting better. Uh, from there we headed down to the iconic uh, the very well-known uh, Staniel Key. And Staniel Key is probably the most, had been like the most popular place, hands down, we had seen the Exumas. One of the things that you have to do when you're down there, it's sort of silly, but it's, it's, it's just something you have to do when you go through is visit the Pig Beach. These giant pigs roaming the beach, people are all over there, but it's still kind of fun to go there and check it out. Even when we were at the marina, there's nurse sharks everywhere, and the, the thing that we really liked about Senyo Key, the, the spot that we enjoyed the most was uh, Thunderball Grotto. And it's literally right outside of the marina. You go there at low tide so you're able to get into it safely, but from the outside it just looks like this sort of unobtrusive rock uh, formation. 
but you get in and you snorkel down, you go into these caves, and you come into this little secret hidden cave oasis underneath the rock and because of the way the lighting comes in through the different underwater caves and stuff it makes this um, really strange effect on the on the water where it's just these beautiful like light tunnels coming in of course there's fish everywhere we hunted there for a long time longer than we should honestly the tide started to rise and because of that we ended up having to do pretty long uh, swims underneath the caves to make it out to safety and from there, we just headed just a little farther south, and almost each island's got some random animal to it. So, of course, we found uh, this iguana island and uh, has this protected species of iguana on the island. So, you go, we anchored, and all along the beach line are all these uh, giant, giant iguanas that are, are sunbathing and they're protected actually by the parks that belong to the Exumas. But it was great to anchor there, watch an amazing sunset, and Georgetown, the Exumas. It's sort of like the sailor's mecca. Hung out in Georgetown for a long time working on boat projects. So we pulled the crew together. We basically came up with the decision, we're gonna make a hard push. And we were all down. We, right, we basically left from Georgetown, came down, made a quick stop in Clarence Town to the south of the Ackland. And then we made uh, what will always be known as the infamous death gap between uh, the Inagua Islands. We got there, of course, in the middle of the night. Storms are going off, lightning's going crazy. It took us over three hours to make it through the gap, and we kept pushing for about another day and a half. And early, early, on a, a pink, sort of a calm morning, out in the distance, we were able to see the Grand Island of Hispaniola in the outer boundaries of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And that sort of uh, began our journey into um, the larger islands of the Caribbean, 